Hi, I am Cesar Santos. Let's see what we can learn and apply to our own artistic career by looking at and learning from a great artist, Vincent van Gogh. I'm here in Amsterdam. I just came out of the Van Gogh Museum. I want to tell you why I love Van Gogh so much and why I think he's one of the greatest masters of all time. First, I want to say that Van Gogh, before becoming a painter, he wasn't so detached from art. He was actually working as a dealer with the galleries and he was involved with works of art from artists of his time and from artists of the past. So this is not a new thing that he just suddenly decided to do. Actually, his mom encouraged him to draw since he was a kid. And by 16, he started working with these uh, dealers, selling art until he was 20. He was actually fired from his job at selling art, but he was involved in that world. A world of art that was rapidly changing its course due to the new Impressionist principles. He seems to be a very intense and sensitive person with the need to feel deeply about life. He was involved with religious activities, his father was a minister, and he wanted Van Gogh to become one. He read the Bible, he wanted to become a priest at a certain point. But in his religious undertaking, he wasn't following the mold. Actually, the church authorities dismissed him for undermining the dignity of the priesthood. That showed his character as a person to not conform to the standards. To the point that when he started undertaking art, he also revolted against the academic standards. Van Gogh is replacing, translating his deep uh, religious feelings for art. Art actually will become his new religion. As he once wrote, some have said it or written in a book, someone else in a painting. Before Van Gogh started to paint, art was going through a fundamental change. Some of the young-minded artists started challenging and rivaling the principles of the art of the establishment, the academies. And Van Gogh saw that as a very attractive way to, to look at art and to approach it. So we have to see Van Gogh not from the point of view of the art of the time and compare it with that, but see him through a person that was observing the environment, was pursuing the art. And he started his career with the fundamentals, which means to draw. In a short period of time, he created over a thousand drawings to explore composition, rhythm, uh, line quality, to develop his, his style, his feeling. Once he said, Drawing is the root of everything, and the time spent on that is all profit. His passion was very clear. He started studying by himself through instructional catalogs. Actually, I'm very cold, so let me, let me get a sweater on. Okay, uh, better. During this time, artists were putting more of themselves in the painting. They were not following the academic style as it was meant to be, but more of expressing themselves through paint, more direct, reflecting his, their personal temperament, their personal ideas, their emotions, through the act of painting, not the other way around. Before, painting was more about the craftsmanship, the storytelling, and sometimes we can see these tendencies of the personal vision from the artist. But Van Gogh decided to go all out and just go raw and express the way he saw life, the way he experienced the world around him, the visual world around him, with a more direct approach, not being so worried about what the standards were at his time. This is a very brave thing to do. Most people think, oh, he's crazy. Uh, I think we have made him crazy. We love the story, we love the drama, that he cuts his ear off, that he would he was eating paint, all these things that we might know and sometimes can be true, we exaggerate to make a cartoon out of Van Gogh and say that Van Gogh is this crazy guy, maybe that's why he painted like that. Definitely he was not a normal person and I'm, we are all glad of that and you cannot be normal if you see the world like that and if you pursue um, art with such a passion. But I, don't, I wouldn't say it so simply and say that Van Gogh was this crazy guy, that's why he's a genius or anything like that. I think he was deliberately uh, pursuing a vision, a new type of application in the arts, and, and through that, that's why he became so powerful. That's why we connect with him. We don't even know why. It's just something universal that he offers, that he brings to the paintings that we feel. When we become conscious of his paintings, we don't notice because it's like a magic trick. We just feel attached to them, emotionally connected, because 
he does represents a universal idea or a universal feeling that we all share in common as viewers. So we cannot just um, describe him as with this iconic idea that he's a crazy guy that just painted this the way he wanted and didn't care. Um, I think he was just looking, experimenting with art, looking for the depth of it. He was searching for how deep he can go with his brush strokes. <laughs> so if he was so good, why he didn't succeed and sell a lot of paintings during his lifetime? Well, it's obvious that he couldn't make and keep his money. He was always dependent on someone, either staying with his parents, then he moved with his uncle, his brother took him, he was living with artists, with Paul Gauguin, and this proves the inability to be independent and, uh, and also proves the fact that he couldn't reach out with his art to buyers and collectors of the time. On top of that, he was creating art that was very difficult and, and, and rare for his time period. So that was double the difficulties. One great lesson we can learn from looking at Van Gogh is that even without money and even with the love that he had for the countryside, he moved to Paris because he understood that was the center of the art world during his time. And he wanted to be part of that scene, of that movement, and see how he could grow within it. Van Gogh was not trying to fit in, trying to paint the way people painted at that time. We can see that he was looking at the world with his own eyes. As an artist, what he did is really difficult because during that time, art was very strict and was uh, very controlled by the academy, but he didn't want to fit in within those boundaries. He didn't want to fit into that um, idea of art. He, wa he wanted to explore something new. He wanted to, to see how far he can take art. So we are lucky to have such a free soul experimenting at such an important and critical time in the history of art. His art was about his relationship with his materials to the end of reinventing what he represented. His paint application recreated and conceptualized what he saw as if what he painted didn't belong to this world, but instead reminded us of this world in the most profound way. He painted the starry night with such a idealization that when standing in front of the painting, we realize how vulnerable we are against the immensity of the sky. Van Gogh, like many of the masters, tried to make us feel that relationship we have with the sky. Van Gogh's art was not about correct proportions, it was not about the light and shade relationship, the value control. He didn't care about representing the color of things as they exist. Van Gogh was painted from the inside. His sunflowers remind us more of the despair that comes from being cut off from one's root, from one's base, from our lives, than a mere pot of sunflowers. His broad patches of color never seem to mix on the canvas, but those patches are directly the path to the soul of what he saw. Through his self-portraits, he sees himself as he sees others, an impression created by a play of brushstrokes that follow the form through an emotional response rather than an optical one. Van Gogh was representing things in his own way. It was not about the genre that he painted. He went from still life to landscapes to portrait painting. He was searching for a deeper way to represent things. Van Gogh was able to create such an honest way of expression that it's useless for other artists to adopt any aspect of his application. His perception of things cannot be imitated, but only enjoyed. His art was so playful, yet serious. His delineation of form a little awkward, yet universal. His brushwork, so direct, yet mysterious. And his compositions, so improvised, yet premeditated. Let's wrap this video up. Van Gogh is not a postcard with a band-aid on his ear. Do you know him by his flowers? Do you know him by his beard? If you like this video, remember to subscribe, hit that like button, let me know your comments and any other ideas for my future videos. In the meantime, see you next week!